Brooklyn Independent Television. He is a teacher, puppeteer, visual artist, and wallpaper maker. And at the moment, he is also focused on reimagining how to teach the future leaders of the world. Meet Noah Apple. My name is Noah Apple Mayers. Uh, the Apple is uh, because I have uh, parents that grew up in the 60s and also because my grandfather uh, really loved apples. He would bring home a case of apples home to his huge family uh, every week and they would just be constantly eating apples. So that's my middle name and since I'm an artist and a teacher I use that uh, as my artist name. When I go into schools I'm Mr. Apple and the kids love it. They're like, Mr. Apple, Mr. Apple! There's a niche in the city uh, for artists who need to make money. They can teach classes and uh, there's organizations and schools that hire them to come into schools and do residencies, spend 10 weeks making puppets and other stuff like that. So that was a, a niche I found early on uh, in the, uh, my time here in the city. I'm a puppeteer and I discovered that as a kid. My family would go up to Vermont, up to this uh, place called Bread and Puppet Theater, to do these giant um, puppet shows that involve hundreds of acres of land. and So that stuck deeply in my mind. And when I got here into the city, I knew I wanted to, that to be part of what I did as an artist. It's a, puppetry is a really cool art form because it's a performance. So rather than spending time in your studio work, you know, painting something and going and putting something on a wall and people going and looking at it and like, oh, that's nice, uh, which is pretty deeply unsatisfactory on many levels because um, art is impossible to talk about and you, most artists I don't think are ever sure that anyone really likes it. <laughs> Maybe, I'm not sure. But as a puppeteer and when you do performance, it's very clear when people are appreciating your work because they, they, you know, they like it or they don't. And uh, When I started doing puppetry, we were doing stuff on the streets um, and that was a really cool challenge because you, the audience is not captive at all. Um, either you hook them or you don't. So that was a really good way to learn about the craft of puppetry. Sometimes I look for puppet stuff, good stuff for puppet shows. So uh, I don't know if I see anything right now, but uh, sometimes little baby clothes are good for puppet costumes uh, or little movable toys that have little uh, gears and stuff. They work well. I love the old children's books. I use those in school. Little Red Hand, I'm definitely a scavenger. More of a more of a vulture than a jackal though. <laughs> this right here is a cranky theater. It's a uh, narrative uh, cut paper painting. Uh, and as you turn it, it tells a story. Uh, this, is, uh, this one tells a story about a smart bomb who uh, is too smart to be a bomb. And this is the factory he's being made in. This show is, uh, was built to go on the street, uh, to be clamped to a bicycle or to a trash can. I perform it with a headlamp, so I can perform this anywhere. Let me show you something else. This puppet here is part of a battle royale scene. We have this uh, character kind of modeled after President Bush, and he's fighting with this other uh, North Korean puppet and another puppet that represents all of Islam. So that was exciting. And uh, down here, I have some examples of some cheap art. A couple years back, I got a case of these fans from the Tribeca Film Festival, and uh, so I uh, put uh, paper over the outsides and I turn them into these these puppets or masks but they also work as fans and you can flip them around 
may work as well. Um, so I made a bunch of those, and this is a the cheap art projects that I do. I, these are things that I can make fast and and sell cheaply. I have a hippie Jesus, <laughs> and they keep you cool. They do work. So here we have uh, a puppet I made. Um, this is a evil scientist puppet, and in the end of the show, he gets his head bonked and his brains pop out. I found different jobs that allow me to use my hands and my mind, and sometimes, sometimes they're different jobs. Sometimes I've been, jump, you know, in the summers I'll paint apartments and do Venetian plaster, make wallpaper, and then in the winter I'll go back into the classroom and use my mind. <laughs> so. Uh, I think as we move into the future, I'll be using my mind and my hands at the same time, and that'll work out. Uh, but I've taught wood shop to K through five kids. Uh, I've worked in pottery studios. Um, New York City has given me uh, opportunities I, I wouldn't have had if I stayed in Maine. Five years from now, I see Brooklyn Apple Academy being a, this strong semi institution, five days a week kids that really love to be there, uh, making amazing work, creating a really great culture of a school, and making a model for other schools. I, I want this model to spread. I, I, think, I think it could easily scale um, up, and I think anyone can start a one-room schoolhouse, and I think this model of, of this project model um, of teaching, of having kids engage in making things and connecting that to what they're the theory that they're learning and connecting it to literacy, I think that can spread to, back to the public school system because in the end, I think uh, we can't just opt out of the public system. I think this is whatever I make or whatever, um, whatever this turns into, I would love if it could influence the greater culture. Download this program's podcast on iTunes, keywords Brooklyn Independent Television.